It's a beautiful Sunday morning in Los Angeles, and we're already starting to see that beach-bound backup on the 405. Over on Pacific Coast Highway, just south of Malibu, there's a two-car fender bender. It's already been clear, but we've still got some bright sunshine that should bring the thermometers up only into the mid or upper 70s. Although some of the inland valleys may get into the upper 80s. Now remember, the cool off sharply in the evening. Colombian presidential candidate, Senator Luis Carlos Galan, at a political rally last Friday. He also took time at a press conference. Pest died two years ago at the age of 93 in Spandau Prison, where he was serving a life sentence as a war criminal. The violence broke out as the neo-Nazis marched through the northern Bavarian town. Where a it special had. task force that the department spokesmen are calling Operation Hammer began the crackdown Friday evening for the hundred over the house he owned and his daughter has lived in for 10 years. He telephoned the police to turn himself in after the shooting, but then turned the gun on himself before the police arrived. Muslim militias surrounded Lebanese Christian forces. Pope John Paul II directly addressed Syrian President Hafez Assad, appealing to him not to follow in the footsteps of the biblical It was Bly Levin's 16th straight start without a loss. He had plenty of home run help from Chili Davis, Wally Joyner, Jack Howell, and Lance Parrish. The Dodgers didn't fare so well. away from your side, son. Move slowly, slowly. You'll be all right. You want to make the phone call, son? Can you tell us what happened, son? Can you tell us what happened? Stay with him. Make sure he's all right.
all right? I don't want you to. Probably the wife. Get a divorce. She can't. The divorce you get on one of the day, without your husband's consent, will never stand up on Argentina. I don't want to go back to Argentina. So what difference is it? Or at home. You may want to go home sometime, darling. Wherever you go for the rest of your life, you're going to be tied to him. You'll never be free. Then it didn't do any good to run away. No good at all. Never does any good to run away, Gilda. Go back to Buenos Aires. No. And get an annulment. You told me your husband left you immediately after the sermon. <laughs> There's nothing to it. And I'll be with you, darling. I'll be right by your side every minute. You want to tell me what happened, son? Come on, Lyle, you can get that one. Come on. Get that, get that. Good. Ben, there you go. There you go. Great shot, Lyle. Way to go, Lyle. That's very aggressive. Now, that's what it takes for plan. Little sloppy, wouldn't you say, Wayne? He could have put you away three times. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, okay. He's okay. dead. He and you take the credit for that. You play inferior competition, and that's all, huh? Is that championship tennis? Let me talk to her. Just a minute. Hello, Marzi. I just broke the tape recorder. I wasn't pressing him. <laughs> but I want him to work on his ground strokes. Yeah, just, just I'm sure you had your reasons, Wayne. You might be able to make great players that way, but not champions. Where am I flying into tomorrow? Yes, Denver. sir. Well, if you've got so a program, I'm, I'm more than willing to Just try me. it out. That won't be necessary. I'll be sending you a check. I'll be getting in Denver. What time? Watch. New coach starts tomorrow. Don't How many is that? 40? 50? Don't criticize your father, Lyle. I played my tail off. He only wants what's best for you. Why can't you take my side once in a while, Mom? I'm not taking anyone's side, Lyle. Miss Switzerland. She's remaining neutral. Hey guys, it's Menendez. Mr. Jose Menendez. Who's your manager? I am the manager. Two guys behind you are no good. You got people around you like that, you're dead in this business. All right, guys, come on, let's go. Robert. Oh. Yeah, they were just, you know... They weren't just anything. You invited them in here. You want a recording contract? That stops. <laughs> My office, 11 o'clock. It does. I'm glad you here, too. I'm in here. Hey, Mom, we're going out. That's nice. Where are you going? I'm um, just dinner. There's a place by Princeton. Take care, Mom.
Do you have to go? We're meeting some people. Of course. How late are you gonna be? Look, why don't you and Jackie just go? I mean, it's don't worry be... about it. She'll be passed out in a half hour anyway. Look at her. Get out. Get out, get out, get out, get out! Get out! Mom, I don't have to go. Oh, what do you care? Oh, come on, Mom. It's a little boy's night out, isn't it? Little boys and big boys night out. Coming or not, Eric? Make up your mind. I don't need any of you anyway. What they ought to do is make a robot that can coach tennis. <laughs> yeah, but then Dad would lose all the fun of firing him, right? You know what Dad have, Lyle? I have like a virtual reality tennis coach, right? Now every couple days, I'm serious, every couple days Dad just push a button, the whole face changes. I don't even think you met this last guy and he's gone already. It wasn't bad, really. Doesn't even pay to learn their names. Eric, um... You're finished. Do you think you can go get the car? I just want to talk to Lyle for a minute. Yeah. I'm sorry. He was going to get a date, but it fell through. It's not that. I, I need to talk to you. Well, we can drop him off at the house. Lyle. And I'm pregnant. I'm going to have the baby, Lyle. Uh, it wouldn't be right to. The thing is, she says she's entitled to. I, I mean, no! A lot of people in college nowadays. You wanted to talk to me? Um, uh, look, I've got this problem. I wanted to talk to you about it. I had a talk. I talked with. Um, Can you speak? Yes. Do so. Uh, Jackie Hayes. Uh, I know who she is. Yeah, I know, Dad. Uh, the thing is, she's pregnant. You stupid imbecile. In this day and age, can you imagine? She, she wants to have a baby. She wants to have the baby. That's what she wants. What do you want? You want to go to Princeton as a father? Uh, let's... Stop it, Lyle. I'll talk to her. I'll take care of it. No, wait a minute! No. You wait a minute. You knew perfectly well when you started with this woman that you weren't going to marry her. Nothing has changed. I know, Dad, but... I'm going to take care of this. Don't ever talk to me in that tone of voice again. Records, Jose. You're a valuable man. We all know it. No more promises, Larry. You think I don't appreciate what you've done? You think I don't know who, who signed all those people? Yeah, but it's not enough to make me president, right? These things take time. Look, Jose, you've done a great job for us the years you've been here. I mean, uh, I wish I could convince you to stay. 
But uh, any way we could help you in the future, why, uh, just ask. You're making a big mistake, Larry. I'll have my attorney get in touch with you for severance. Assume you're right. Assume free trade. Which industries benefit? Manufacturing. Lyle? Possibly heavy machinery. Certainly nothing in electronics. The Japanese would wipe us out. There was price control during the Korean War. Did you know that? What were the results? That was to prevent inflation. Wasn't it? Did it? I don't... I guess... From a high school sophomore, that kind of ignorance is forgivable. Perhaps forgivable. But trying to get admittance into Princeton, you gotta use your brain. Exercise it. Like you play tennis. Discipline yourself, please. You're not gonna make it on tennis alone. I'll do some more work on it tonight, sir. I'll see what I can find out. you see what you can find out? I'll talk to you about it at breakfast. I'll know more about it then. You'll find it under the Office of Price Stabilization. And notice that there's a direct historical connection with the wartime rationing. Yes, sir. Lucy, the asparagus was delicious tonight. Did you get it at the market? Uh, no, ma'am. I got them at the stand this morning. I gave my resignation to Larry today. I think we'll do much better in California, all of us. Lucy, my coffee in the den, please. I need to talk to you. Is now a good time? Mm-hmm. It's about to move to California. Um, do you have something lined up out there? There's so much of the music business here. and So... I'm wondering, with Lyle applying to Princeton, maybe you could talk to some companies in New York. You really think Lyle wants us around here as he goes to college? No. Uh, it's just that he's got this girlfriend. And this Hayes is out of the picture, but that's not really what this is all about, is it? All of my friends are here. And you work such long hours anyway. I know it's your job and it's important, but I'm so lonely, Jose. I know you say I'll make friends in California, but... But I don't know anyone there and I don't make friends easily. So if we could just please stay. Of course. <laughs> you can stay with Lyle, I'll take Eric. M me stay with Lyle. At least until he's into Princeton. We can't do this. Can't? Do Me stay with Lyle, you can't mean it. I thought that was your wish. He despises me! You're his mother. Yes, that's what makes it so unbearable. Didn't know you felt that way. Don't go and leave me here. Listen to me, please. I know this isn't much of a marriage, but at least we're a family, at least we've got that. And if I'm here and you're in California with Eric, that'll be the end of it. Just see no, Jose! Life. Do you think I don't know? At least this way you come home every night. Fine. We'll all go to California. <laughs> it needs landscaping, but you can make a magnificent garden here. Everything grows. It's beautiful. It is what it is. But you'll make it beautiful. Me? When have you ever seen me garden? Come see the pool. This bougainvillea stains the cement. <laughs> Your mother's gonna love this. 
She's gonna say we need more shade, though. Well, we can move it over by the trees. It's possible. No, actually, we can move the trees over here. That's better. an obvious analogy, and I'm sure the whole audience got it. Miller was equating McCarthyism, anti-communism, with the Salem witch hunts. Exactly. Today we need footnotes in the text to point out the connection. But the minute Miller's audience saw the play was about this witches, they had no problem. Do you have something to say, Mr. Menendez? These, uh, these platitudes we're accepting so glibly should be examined once in a while if the object here is to get anything like an education. Normally, we wait until we're called on, Mr. Melendez, and then we explain our positions without belittling other people. The name is Menendez. And if this were a civilized discussion, well, I'm sure I'd follow those procedures. But the fact, if anybody's interested in facts, is that communists are real and witches aren't. Where's the obvious analogy? aren't they? Most of them, yeah. <sighs> Not much, actually. I was thinking of getting a job. There's no need for that, Lyle. All you have to do is prepare yourself for Princeton. <laughs> I wasn't accepted, aren't you forgetting that? You'll be accepted next semester. Are you keeping up with the curriculum I sent you? Of course, Dad. I'm on top of it. Look, I've got to go. Say hi to Eric and Mom. Did I ever tell you my father practices telekinesis? Telekinesis? Controlling matter at a distance. In this case, I'm the matter. You know, I don't get it. You didn't get accepted, but you hang around here. Until what? Until you get accepted next semester? We do get it. Let's go. Wow, what am I missing here? What you're missing, Miss Inquisitor. <laughs> is that if I went back there, all my father's friends would know I wasn't accepted, wouldn't they? Oh, geez, what's wrong with him? There's nothing wrong with him. You don't understand. Wow. Well, I... You don't understand, so just shut up. Damn it, Menendez, that wasn't part of the deal. You sold your company, Mr. Winters, and I was put in charge. There was nothing about a role you would play. You don't get to squeeze me out. I'm not squeezing anything. You sold your company. That was under duress. It was under duress and you knew. You accepted it, sir. Marzi, would you please come in with accounts payable? Thank you. You accepted it, Mr. Winters. Accepted it? It wasn't an offer. That was some kind of an ultimatum. But you accepted it. Now, would you please get out of my office? Oh, you're going to be sorry, Menendez. You're going to be real sorry. Are you threatening me, sir? What are you doing? We're just playing a game, Dad. I gave you a choice, didn't I? Dad, it's just a game. Hey, Eric, I, I guess I'll see you in school tomorrow. I gotta go. Come on, guys. Wait, Craig, wait, please. But I just have to talk to him about some homework, okay? Fine. Craig looks like an intelligent man. He might learn something. Both of you come up here. What part of our agreement didn't you understand? Dad, it's it's not that. It's it's just this. Listen to yourself. It's not that. It's not this. It's something else. You're old enough to be a man. If you can't be one, act like one. Don't tell me what it is and tell me what it is. 
It is a soccer game, sir. And why aren't you supposed to play soccer? Because I chose swimming. I did my swimming. I did an hour in the pool this morning. That's good. That was this morning, not this afternoon. <sighs> Craig, did he tell you that his grandmother was an Olympic swimming champion for Cuba? Yes, sir. He tells you about his family's accomplishments. Yes, sir, he mentioned it. He told you that his grandfather was one of the top five soccer players in all of Cuba. When I was your age, I was given the same choice. Do you think that was an easy decision for me to make? Do you have any idea? I wanted to be like my father. I wanted to follow in his footsteps. I wanted to walk down the street and have people say, Ay va Joselito, he plays just like his father. But I had to evaluate myself. You can only excel in one sport, that's what my father said to me. And I had to make the choice. Could I follow in my father's footsteps? And when I found out that that wasn't true, I became a swimmer like my mother. Dad, I know that. You're 16 years old. Up to now, you've shown me nothing but mediocrity. That better change. Some speech. Made me what I am today. Jeez, Eric. Give it a break. You like the way they sing? Yeah, very good. They're good? They're damn good. Then I'll sign them. I hope she knows what she's getting herself into. Just don't say anything. If they ever talk to my family, I wouldn't sign anyone. <laughs> Expecting someone? No. No one who wouldn't call first. They ever recorded? Just this video. They play places you haven't even heard of. And to find them some decent dates, then sign them. Maria, who's here? I'll go. I'll get it. That won't be necessary. Princeton says, uh. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, you <laughs> would do it! <laughs> That's wonderful. You did it. I told you you could do it, and you did it. You did it. Was it worth it? Yeah, Dad, every minute. You did it. Princeton. Now, you'll stay home until the semester starts. We'll tell people you're taking some time off. Yes, sir. Let's celebrate! Come on! <laughs> to a very notable achievement, one of many. Do you remember this moment, Eric? If you redirect yourself, you may be able to bring us news like this. You can't let it go for a minute, can you? No, should I? We can't all be loyal, Dad. Maybe if you redirect yourself, you can learn to live with that. Sorry about this, Lyle. I hope this doesn't uh, ruin your homecoming. He hasn't. Your brother's really hard on himself. The pressure. Yeah, I wonder where it came from. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to talk to my brother. Tell myself you're gonna be home soon, and now you. Come on, Eric. Five months till I have to. Get I mean, back. you gotta accept it for God's sake. I'm gonna put the screws on now. That's Dad. You gotta learn to live with it. You gotta understand where he's coming from. What? What? what are you, where is he coming from? What? Cuba? Take it easy, Eric. I'm on your side. I know you are. It's. It's just hard with you gone. And now, in a few months, you're gonna be gone That's again. That's why you've gotta listen to me. That's why you've gotta get on top of this thing. I'm not gonna make it without you. All right, then. Listen to me. This is a guy who got out of Cuba with nothing. Look around. Look where we are. That's an amazing jump, Eric. You gotta 
push yourself to do stuff like that. You could, could have been a busboy somewhere and we'd be living in some two-bedroom flat. Wait, he's not human. He's not soft, that's all. Most people are soft. They don't know how to get what they want. They let things get in their way. People are people. You're damn right. No one gets in Dad's way, ever. What, you're gonna tell me that's right? I mean, listen to yourself, Lyle. It's not you. You sound like him. You will too, little brother. Just stick with the program. Nothing's gonna get in your way. No, man. no, you, you can't defend him like that. I mean, look at what he does to me. Look at what he does to Mom. He's a great man, Eric. She's nothing. You're too close to her. That's your problem. You don't watch out, you're going to be nothing, too. How can you love a man like that? Love him? Are you crazy? I hate his guts. Hang tough, you'll see. when he went to kindergarten. You think we'd be used to it by right now. Ready? Begin. One, two, three. Come on, louder. Breathe it. Four, five. Punch it. Six, seven. Come on, baby. was called for two o'clock, Menendez. Yes, sir, but you're working on the volley. I don't need work on my volley. So you just gave yourself the day off, is that right? Yeah. No, sir, I was practicing my serve. You're part of a team, Menendez. Does that concept mean anything to you? No, sir, I play tennis. Shot, how we won. <laughs> hey, you were quick. It's been a short practice. It started at two. Too. You were here till four. I was practicing, wasn't I? <laughs> oh, Lyle, you can't do that. I just did. Look, all they care about is the results. I always go with tennis players. I like the way they move. On the court? Well, that's part of it. I'm gonna take a shower. I'll be out in a minute. Need your back wash? Friend Elisa's? Yeah. You're, uh... Oh, I... I just live here. <laughs> it's cool. It's no problem. Gentlemen, this is 50 freestyle. Swimmers to the blocks. Take your marks. Great swim, Mike. You lost it on the turns. You're gonna have to start working on your turns. He took two tenths of a second off his personal best. Did you know that, Eric? Two tenths. Not the weekend. Take the weekend off. On Monday, you start to work on your turns. I can see him, Mommy. He was right there. He's in the next lane. And I just pulled. <laughs> Dad told me no, to no. pull. And you to did pull. fine. You did fine. <laughs> you did just fine. You can't. 
Daddy. You can't let your father upset you like this. You're supposed to take care of yourself. You're supposed to! You're my mother. You're supposed to take care of me. We've got a choice. It can be on the courtier by uh, Casti... Casti... Uh... Casti Leone. Right. Or Machiavelli the Prince. Machiavelli. All right, fine. Okay, in the Prince, the concept of social relations, how they reflect the Renaissance and the change from medieval. That's fine, I understand. Thanks, Dad. Marty, can you type this up for me and express it tonight, please? Oh, more homework? Mm -hmm. What's this one about? Machiavelli. Oh. When are you going to become a Republican? Can you pay me more money? <laughs> I got econ out of Menendez? You him? Sign at the bottom. I mean, I love the competition, being better than someone else. But it's it's more than that. Sometimes don't you just want to smash them? Just drive it right over the net to their faces. Yeah. But you're never supposed to admit it. It's such a civilized game. I'll show you civilized. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> mm -hmm. Can we be serious for a minute? I'm just... I'm so worried about you. I never see you do anything. You know? School? That's why you're here, isn't it? It's under control. Let's talk about something else. Mm. If you flunk out, leave me here alone. Mm. Well, well, well. Oh. Aren't we naughty? Checking IDs, let's forget no, 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 about no. it. Don't worry about it. What about Craig? He's meeting us here. Just wait here. Right. I told him they'd be checking. Don't drink it, right? I mean, I don't want to be looking for a new job. No problem. I told you, my dad's in the business.
Well, you're up early. I've got some stuff I've got to do this morning. Well, that's not like you, Chan. What do you mean? You're nothing, I guess. No, it's just... Lisa sort of mentioned you don't study too much, that's all. Sometimes you just got to know how to handle these things. Oh, is that right? Failure will never overtake you if your desire to succeed is strong enough. What the hell is that? My father gave it to me. You ought to read it. Oh, oh, here. Anyone who wants true success should read this masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, sure, hey, why not? Hey, if your dad gave it to you. people who matter and people who don't. It's that simple. You make up your mind what you want to be. And who do you want to be, killer? It's all in here. <laughs> Lyle, have you got Henderson? No. Damn. I gotta go to the library. Are you gonna be here? What do you think? Yeah. All right. Watch my stuff for me, okay? Thanks. comes down to a matter of cell metabolism. And it's the action of enzymes that are all important. Read the material on enzymes. Your lab reports are at the door. And I'll see you all on Wednesday. Just a minute, Andres, if I could see you for just a minute. I think you know what this is about. Yes. No, sir. Well, then, let's skip ahead to the last chapter, Mr. Menendez. Your last chapter of Princeton, I'm afraid. What seems to be the problem, sir? Plagiarism, Mr. Menendez. In this case, you're using another student's data in your lab report. <laughs> I was in lab all weekend, There'll be sir. a hearing, Mr. Menendez, but don't insult my intelligence and yours. Sir, uh, I panicked, sir. No, none of my experiments worked out. I was afraid. Experiments don't always work, Mr. Menendez. That doesn't justify... I know that, sir. I, I was afraid. My father... Is... Your father copied the report? He'll kill me. He'll destroy me. He doesn't tolerate mistakes. So I took I the chance... I of... this will be more difficult to explain to him, Mr. Menendez. Sir, I know I was wrong. Uh, I'll, I'll do the lab again. Whatever it takes. You'll hear from I the have... discipline committee, Mr. Please, Menendez. Please, sir, you don't understand my father. Please. Goodbye, Mr. Menendez. here, Mr. Menendez, is a clear case of stealing another student's work. So I'm not sure I understand the purpose of your visit. I don't know what my son has said in his defense. There's no question of his guilt, Mr. Menendez. He copied another student's data. I don't think my son denies that. Am I right, Lyle? Yes, sir. When I say defense, sir, I do not mean denial. When we are wrong, we accept our responsibilities. But there are, however, things that can be said on his behalf. Of course, we're willing to hear what you have to say, Mr. Menendez, but this isn't a trial. What your son did constitutes plagiarism. The honor code here is very specific. I know well your honor code. But in this case, you're punishing the wrong man. If you mean that the other student copied your son's work, I assure you... What I mean, sir, is the guilty party here is not Lyle. It's his father. I see the doubt in your eyes. When I first heard about this, I felt it was a betrayal of my family, you understand. But as I lay there, unable to sleep, 
I started to remember the demands that I placed upon him. Unreasonable demands, I now understand. Most of our students were raised with very high expectations, Mr. Menendez. I know that my background may not be relevant here except to mitigate my own guilt. I came to America as a refugee escaping communism in Cuba. My family was very successful before the days of Castro, but I came to America poor. And the most important thing to me was the distinction between myself and other Spanish-speaking refugees. I am not Central American, nor South American, nor Mexican, or Puerto Rican. I'm Cuban and proud of it. And I'm not a tolerant man. I placed intolerant demands on my children. This is the result. A young man so terrified of displeasing a demanding parent that he makes a tragic miscalculation. Who's guilty here, sir? I am. And I ask you to take this into consideration upon making your decision about Lyle. You state your case quite strongly, Mr. Menendez. I hope in the light of what you say, there will be some improvement in your relationship with your son. But our honor code is very important to us here. I am willing to recommend suspension rather than expulsion. After a year, Lyle will be free to reapply for admission. Is this decision final? It goes before the honor committee, but I have little reason to believe that their decision will be any different. I cannot accept this. If you don't mind, I would like to speak to the president of the university. I do mind, Mr. Menendez, very much. Discipline is handled at the college level. I doubt he would see you. Have a good day, sir. Lyle. That arrogant, self-serving wasp will lead us to the same thing he is. They pride themselves in the liberality. They're hypocrites, no better than the communist trash. Ed, I wanted to thank you for all that. I have to come here and grovel before this swine for you, and you're not even worth it. How dare you? You may leave me like You! Why does everything have to do with you? Because unfortunately, you're my son. It's a bad bargain for both of us. What happened to all that crap about your guilt, huh? We both know who cheated, Lyle. Don't disgrace yourself any further. Perhaps you would have done better off with a short order cook or a busboy for a father. We'll never know that. But the fact is, you're not welcome at home now. You're to stay here until you're readmitted. Try to do something with yourself. Okay, really. You 
know they hate me. Oh, I see it in their eyes. Don't say that. Come on, don't even think that. I used to say there was love as well as hatred, but now I don't know. I see their eyes and I don't know. They're just kids. Everybody resents their parents. I don't know what I meant to do for them, for their sake. What did they think? Didn't want to take care of them, hold them, make it easy for them. They're my children. No. Done it wrong. All wrong. His hand grips the doorknob. He turns it slowly. Right, right, okay. Now, we cut to close-up. Hamilton, his forehead is beaded with sweat. What are you doing up the surgery? No, we're writing a movie. We film movies, your head screen plays. Where's your... All right, no, no. Oh, uh, close-up, right. Um, Okay, he swings open the door. Interior of the bedroom. You're up early. Thought I'd start a new exercise program. How long do you think it'll take me to look younger, huh? How long do you think I'd have to bike before I look 25, or maybe 30? Is that about the right age? Is this some kind of riddle? Do I look tired to you? Hmm? Do I? Old. How did you sleep last night? No, 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 no. Not being loaded. I mean, come on. See, the thing is, he came here on a swimming scholarship. And all of a sudden, the revolution comes and shuts everything down. You couldn't get money out. There was no way for my grandparents to send him a nickel. He didn't even know a soul. Except for the swim team, I guess. And later on, he got a job at a restaurant or something. And that's how he put himself through college. <laughs> People we have to deal with are very difficult, too, Philip. Believe me. This man we bought the company from, uh... Winter. Bob Winter. Very good. Thank you. He wanted me to keep him on. Why would I want that? Now he's filing a suit. How can Winter sue you? It's a nuisance more than anything. And one of the guys on the swim team? Mm -hmm. His dad says that Winter's a gangster or something. Is that supposed to matter? I don't know. It could. It doesn't. Can't live your life governed by fear, Eric. When we're done with this suit, 
Philip, I would like to have Eric have two more jackets. As far as I'm concerned, I just soon write the whole thing off. Well, right off college? What good's it doing? My whole life's on hold. I'm supposed to wait around until they decide whether they're going to take me back or not. And maybe they won't. The hell with it. I agree with you. I mean, if you're going to spend your whole life chilling out, might as well do it on purpose. So, obviously, you've given us some thought. You have some alternatives in mind? Anything. Yeah. How about this place? This? <laughs> This is what you're gonna do? Why not? Look at this place. It's half empty. Three blocks from a campus full of students, and they can't fill the place. Redesign it, change the menu. It's a gold mine. I can't real allow. You don't know the first thing about running a restaurant. Didn't you say that uh, your dad used to work in restaurants or something? It was his first job. You know, I'm sick and tired of hearing about your wonderfully accomplished father. If you don't understand him, you can't understand me. Well, I suppose Nick does. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, you got that right. Then why don't you marry Nick? Damn it! They're not there? Not in there. Where the hell would they keep the keys? I don't know. Come on, Carl, think. You can't take my car up in the hills. They, they could be anywhere. I'm not supposed to take the car out when my Carl, Carl, home. Carl, Carl. We are going to put gas in the car, okay? Your parents won't even know. Come on, Carl. We don't want to sit around here all day. You can't take your car? Mm. What the hell are you doing? Look, they're in some drawer. People always sell the car. Aaron, cut it in out. A drawer. Okay. In a drawer. What's that? It, it's nothing. It's just junk. Um. <laughs> Jackpot. Now, what do you say we call a couple girls and take them with us? Great. All right, you go fill the car up and we'll make the phone calls, all right? All right, we can go get gas. Carl, away. Carl, Carl, everything doesn't have to be an argument. Just go fill the car up. All right, all right. What was that all about? Combination. What do you want to bet it's to the safe and the den? What are you doing? Come on, cut it out. He'll be back in a minute. Let's call some girls. You said we were going to call, call some, some girls. Call some girls and drive around? King, this is it. This is what we were talking about. It's a perfect crime. A perfect crime in your friend's house. It's like our movie, Perfect Murder. This is the perfect burglary. Yeah, in a friend's house, no one would ever suspect. It's crazy, that's all. Craig. Of course it's crazy. Man, that's the whole point. Aren't you just sick of all this nothing? At school and swimming and swimming in school? I'm sick of it. We go to jail. The only way you go to jail, Craig, is if you're dumber than the cops. Come on. How often do you think these people go to the safe anyway? Months before they figure it out. This stuff's all insured anyway. It's not like they're out anything. He's a hard man, harder than my father, really. 
austere, you know? I never saw him smile. I don't think my father did either. That's the Menendez legacy. The recipe for producing great men. <laughs> Look what you started, Grandpa. My father thinks I'm worthless. What do you think, huh? Come on, Lyle, you're not doing yourself any good. I'm fine. It's always good to meet the dead Menendez first. Psychs you up for the live ones. Newark Airport. Here, keep the change. Hey, thanks a lot. So this is where you live? Not when I can help. This place is a damn palace, man. What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, thank God you're home. That bad, huh? It's been, uh... I could kill him. <laughs> and down the iron stair we trapped, each from his separate hell. <laughs> I told you this place was dangerous. This handsome madman here is my brother. Eric? Nick Mariner. Hey. Hi. Hey, it's cool. You know, Lyle, he told me stories and what stuff. About me? Oh, about all the Menendez. Living and dead. I even showed him grandfather's grave. We're trying to figure out how we all got this way. <laughs> Come on, let's get this over with. It's nice to meet one of Lyle's friends. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Uh, Lyle tells me that you're in some of his classes. What are you majoring in, Mr. Mariner? It's Nick, ma'am. My father's Mr. Mariner. You know, it's funny. Uh, the first time anyone called me that, I had absolutely no idea who he was talking to. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think I'd ever get used to that. Well, you see, my father, he was very straight-laced, you know. Military background. Foreground, too, I guess. <laughs> I just wanted to know what you were planning to do with your life. Uh, uh, well, boy, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of a very deep Mom, question. Mom, that is not a very polite question well, to ask people. Of course He's a student. He should have some plans. I doubt if he does. Do you have any plans, Mr. Mariner? This is my father. Dad, this is... Nick. Nick Mariner. Is that right? What are you doing? This is crazy. Is it? Is it crazy, Mr. Mariner? I'm not a student at Princeton. I was never admitted. That is what you're talking about, isn't it, sir? Do you have any other lies you'd like to tell us? No, sir. Because now would be the time to set the record straight. Of course, thou must never forget that it is always later than you think. Are you quoting something, Mr. Mariner? The Ninth Commandment of Success, sir. The Lyle had mentioned that it's one of your favorites. Are you mocking me, sir? No, sir. See that you don't. But you were, weren't you? Tried to teach you some values. Not to be passed around your disreputable friends like some smutty joke. I'll see you in my study now. I wasn't mocking him. Well, tell him that. What do you believe me? Lyle, it is never going to work between the two of you if you're as stubborn as he is. It's not going to work out, period. Haven't you figured that out yet? Excuse me, I think I'm just... Your father loves you so much. It's just he can't show it. It's such a waste. And your brother really does admire him. But he just... He can't ever let him know it. I'm not gonna argue with you. He's a fraud and he's taking you in. It gives you the right to check up on my friends. Your other friends are not frauds. And yes, I did check up on them. 
They come from good families. Oh, and because someone isn't from a good family. No! It's because he lies about it! And I want him out of my house now! I'm sure he doesn't want to stay in this house. Not in the morning, not later, now! And I don't want you to see him again. Is that clear? It's clear. Not here or in Princeton. I said it was clear. Nick, I'm sorry. No, forget it. I'm out of here. I don't care about that stuff. I don't care yeah, about it. You can't do anything about it. He says, I can't see you. He checks. He says that... The guy just called a cab. What did your daddy say? I can't do that either. I'm sorry. I don't want you to go, man. I want you... Yeah. I know. Look, Lyle, I don't know if I'm the guy to tell you this. But if you want some advice, you'll get the hell out of here, too. I can't. It'll be over with someday. Yeah, Lyle, I... I see the way you and your father, the way you guys look at each other. Man, it's like, it's like you guys, you're destroying each other. Like, like, like which one of you is going to kill the other one first? talk to you. Not now, Eric. Come on, it'll just take a second. I just want to show you something. What the hell? I stole it. You stole it. I'm a safe in Carl's house. Wow, it was it was perfect. I mean, Really perfect. Weren't you afraid you'd get caught? Not really. Then why do it? It's not much challenge to opening a safe, Eric. What'd somebody do? Give you the combination? You want to see what you're really made of? Do a real burglary.
get any brothers, right? Decent thieves. You both disgust me. It was, it was just Leave for a it joke. Alone, Eric. It wasn't his fault. I put him up to it. I'm very gallant of you. But I assure you I'm not interested in your pathetic excuses. Now listen to me, both of you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what's gonna happen. And that's not open for discussion. Go in the house. I appreciate how difficult these matters can be. Privileged children in a situation like this, it's very upsetting. I can imagine. We struggle all of our lives to try to give our children everything in hopes that they won't have to go through all that we had to go through as children. But maybe it'd be better if they did. Maybe deprivation taught us something we're not allowing them to learn. But we don't serve the interest of justice by ruining the lives of two young men. Or well, by letting a couple of spoiled kids walk on a thing like this well it's obvious that this is some sort of prank as you say my children are spoiled they don't lack for material possessions they had no use for any of the things that they stole from those houses get to the point mr menendez can i speak to you alone of course wait outside You need a satisfactory resolution, that much I understand. Eric will plead guilty. He's a juvenile and will be treated accordingly. He'll be placed on probation and after two years, when he reaches his majority, his record will be sealed. As long as there are no other problems. Understood. I want Eric to see a psychiatrist. He has some kind of adjustment problem I want to take him care of. Understood. And the other one? All charges will be dropped. Now, wait a minute. He's going to Princeton, and he's not a juvenile. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'll take it up with the DA. That's all I can do. And they're going to see a shrink. That's important. It's very important. They'll be treated immediately. Oh, Eric, hi. Oh, Mr. Menendez, how are you today? Anything I can do for you? Your house was robbed, sir. Yes, it was, a couple weeks ago. Why? We, we did it, Mr. Flynn. My brother and I did it. And we're going to return everything. And if anything was damaged, we will pay for it. Dr. Ozil, the detective's name was Mark. Charles Martin, I believe. He characterized it as an adjustment problem. That is what I'd like you to address, if you could, so I could get back to him and tell him that that's been taken care of. You were involved in these burglaries as well, I understand. Well, I, uh, Eric was the only one yes, who pleaded guilty. he was. The doctor can't help them unless they're completely honest with him. Dr. Ozil, we'd like the boys to tell you everything. It's really nothing to worry about. Everything that is said in this office is protected by the doctor-patient privilege. The answer to your question is, yes, I was involved in the burglary, but my father fixed it so it wouldn't be in my otherwise distinguished record. Any other questions? Sit up. The whole thing's driving me crazy. Mom doesn't say anything. Dad doesn't say anything. Bomb's gonna go off. At home? On my head. What, what, are the, what are you all looking at? Nobody's looking at anything, man. Look, it was only a burglary, all right? Nothing to worry about, nothing violent. I'm getting treatment, so thank you for your concern. Hey. 
Hands are heavy, man. Sorry, brother. I have a lot to do today. So he just decides to move. Find some house in Beverly Hills and that's it, we're out of there. <laughs> I mean, you tell me, is that normal? You resent it? I, said, I, I don't know whether I resent it. <sighs> it's just crazy, that's all. You don't know whether you resent it Look, or- I told you, I don't know. Why don't we just talk about something else, all right? Waste of everybody's time, isn't it? Not mine. This is my job. Waste of my time, then. Is your time valuable? No, that's why I'm here. You don't think that uh, getting some of these feelings out would be a benefit? <laughs> I think they'd lock me up. No, Lyle, anything that you say to me in here just stays. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a figure of speech. How long do we have to keep this up? Well, the court order wasn't specific, but I'd say a good faith effort would be at least six right, months. Let's see if we can cut that short. The patient shows an inappropriate effect and diminished awareness of the reality of his position. He's activated almost exclusively to the extent he's activated at all by an intense loathing for his father, matched only by the intensity of his loathing for himself. Ah. Herr Doctor, a close examination of the evidence suggests the unresolved Oedipal conflict with their classic mix from megalomania with the attendant episodes of self-doubt that usually attend these manifestations. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. The burglary scheme was self-destructive. Fulfilling a uh, deep-felt need for punishment and humiliation. Which in his case are richly deserved. How's that? Perfect self-awareness. I bet you don't run into that too often, do you, Doc? Not too often, no. And let's see how self-aware you are, Doctor. You're in this for the money, right? Why don't you just bill my parents for the next six months? Save us both the time. But this isn't about me, Lyle. This is about you. It was nice you. talking to you, Doctor. I feel better already. I finished, Shirley. Help yourself. Lighten up, man. Come on, come around to the back before my father sees you. He's here? I thought you well, said he Well, he didn't leave. Leaving. What's up? Lyle, what are we... What's going on? Get off my property! Get out of here! All right, all right. I'm going, I'm going. If I ever catch you around my boys again, I'm telling you now, you're going to be very sorry. Do you understand? Yes, sir. We had to leave our house because of him and morons like him. Do you understand? Yes, sir. We all understand. Look at me. If I ever get to kind of scum around here again, I'm telling you now. He didn't even know he was... Shut up! You disgust me. Get out of my way. Look at the bright side. It's a terrific place, and we are definitely on the way up. I don't know what the hell he wants from me. You haven't figured that out yet? He wants to destroy you, Eric. I've tried everything. I worked my ass off on the swimming. I didn't win, so he pulls me off the team. I got through three tennis tournaments this summer. I, I blow the fourth one. It's gone. Eric? 
We are experiments to clone the great Menendez. And we're not working out. What do you do if you're dead? You cut your losses. You flush it. <laughs> I think he's figured out he doesn't like fatherhood. Well, now he says that I can't even be on the tennis team this fall. And he says that I'm going to be living at home. And I was going to be in a dorm out of here. You can't ever let go. Sometimes it seems like he'd wipe us out if he could. Of course he could. He's like a bowl constrictor, you know? Squeeze and let go, squeeze and let go. Either way, we're dead. God, Lyle. Wow. <sighs> Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, like, what if they calm down and shut up? It's the only way. We've got our whole lives at stake here. We've got to be able to protect ourselves. Yeah, I know we do, but if... No! We've got to! We've got to! Well, we're looking for protection around the house. I mean, what would I use, a shotgun? You mean burglars? Yeah, right, burglars. You could use a shotgun. Let me show you something. This is a light, fast-action, well-made weapon. And this will stop burglars? Shotgun like this? Oh, yeah. It'll kill whatever needs killing. All right, that's, that one's fine. I'll take two of them. I need your name, some identification. Uh, Nick Mariner. Before we go, why don't we we'll go downstairs and we'll Just tell them. Just go, we don't have to tell anyone. Lyle, we always tell them when we're going out. Okay, okay, we'll tell them. Let's go. <sighs> Frankly, I don't think it's a good idea. It's a movie, that's all. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't want you going. Come on, Mom, it's Sunday You heard what I said. Give me one good reason. I don't need to give you a reason. I don't want an argument. Put your arguing, side. please. It's not like he's got school, you know. Why does it's everything some... I say have to be contradicted? I told you I don't want you going out, and I think that that should one. be enough. This is ridiculous. Don't take that tone of voice with your mother, right? You heard her. She doesn't want you to go out. You're staying in. We're just meeting some people for a movie. You're not going anywhere. Is that clear? She wants you to stay in. You're going to stay in. That's the end of it. What are we, under house arrest? Just want to go to movie the two of you.
either. Why don't you run?
that a 911 call was placed at about 10 p.m. this evening and that this is the home of the Menendez family. Police spokesman will be giving a statement in about 30 minutes. From what we've been able to gather so far, the bodies of reporting industry executive Jose Menendez and his wife Kitty were discovered by their two sons when the boys returned home tonight. One officer we spoke with said off the record that the couple may have been shot as many as 20 times, but department spokesmen aren't confirming that for the time being. Shall we go outside, huh? Outside. I'd like to talk to you if you're allowed to. Be a good idea. You're Lyle? That's right. Can you tell me what happened? My brother and I, we went to a movie. And, uh, we were going to meet some friends, but Eric forgot his ID. It's a driver's license? No, fake ID. He's underage. So we figured we'd order some drinks, and uh, we came back to pick it up. We found, uh, that. Anybody see you at this movie you were at? <laughs> Batman, Century City. I'm sure someone did. Shouldn't be any problem, then. Guys, uh, don't have any idea who might have wanted to do something like this for your parents? Um, my, my father's in the music hey. business. He's, um... That was... Um, some of the some of the acts that he signed, it, he, um, it got them off drugs. I mean, I mean that that was a big deal with my father. He did, he didn't like drugs, and um, I mean, I mean he, he kicked the dealers out, you know. I show you. So you think uh, one of these guys might? It's possible. You ought to check on it. <laughs> uh, there might have been um, I don't know how you say it. Uh, organized un, under. Underworld organized crime connections. Inspector <laughs> Marguello, do you have any leads? I can't comment on that right now. Is there a suspect? Are we looking at another Manson here? Purdy was shot six times. Come on, do you have a motive? Is there a motive involved here? John, did you see it out there? Yeah. So what do you have? I mean, what can I tell the reporters? Tell them anything. It's not a viable alternative. And you figure it out. Look, detective, I've got to give them something. What do we have? We got two dead bodies. Come in, please. you want. That's why you're in the state that you're I know in. that I don't want to be pawed over. Oh, I really don't have time for this kind of nonsense. You heard about the murders last night? I was on the radio. You know who those people were? He's in the record business or something? My patient. Patients. It's plural. They're two sons. They're my patients. No one is using the term execution. According to a copy of the medical examiner's report we've been able to see, that may be precisely what happened at the Beverly Hills home of record company executive Jose Menendez and his wife Kitty Sunday night. This is the presidential. It's solid gold. I think you can safely say it's the ultimate watch. I think you could say that. What do you think I could uh, wear to the memorial service? I don't, I don't know. We'll take it. It's, With uh, tax, it will be slightly over 13000 Of course. Uh, 
We'd also like to see something in stainless steel, you know, for everyday use. Two of them. What did my father believe in? Let me read you a letter that he wrote me when I was away at school. I believe, he wrote, that both you and Eric make a difference. I believe that you will. I encourage you not to select the easy road. I urge you to walk with honor, regardless of the consequences, and to challenge yourself to excellence. My father believed in excellence. He believed in accomplishment. Show me what you can do. That was my father's creed. That was how he brought us up. To show him what we could do. And to believe in ourselves. And to know that great things are possible for a man daring enough to try. That's my father's legacy. And I will always be grateful to him for that. I loved him. I loved him very much. He was a great man. A great man. Um, I, I, I just want to thank all of you for coming. I, uh, I think about my dad and my, and my mom and what it would have meant. I, I, like my mom, she was um, just to see all of you here today for her. Just, just thank you. Thank you. Marcy, why don't you ride with us, okay? Marcy, you said I would never be able to fill my father's shoes. You make your own footsteps, Lyle. Don't be concerned with filling your father's shoes. You don't understand. These are my father's shoes. Turn with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. I really liked it here. No problem, kid brother. Move some of the stuff back. Sell the other place. Let somebody else clean the blood off the walls. UCLA, I guess. And they have a great tennis program. And Dad kind of figured I wasn't going anywhere with the swimming, but I don't know. I think you ought to go there. You know, take your mind off things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, you know, it's so unexpected that you don't have time for the usual reaction. And, uh, of course, it leaves me responsible for the estate, Eric. God, isn't that hard? In a sense, uh, on the other hand, I've been waiting so long to be in a position like this that uh, this transition comes easy. You buy the idea that it was a hit? A mess like that? Two and a head. It's not a mob hit. Then what, cult? I don't know. What do you think? Bloody enough, but that's about it. What does that leave? The kids. The kids. You know, you guys ought to call a maid service. Get this place cleaned up. I could get some numbers from my mom. You guys should hire a couple. He can take care of the grounds. I don't know. Well, you don't know about the grounds, or you don't know if we need full-time help. 
both. Are you guys still eating? I thought we were supposed to play at 10 o'clock. Oh. We're not on standard time, buddy. Can I get you anything, Craig? Coffee, guest. Maybe we can play some doubles. Wow, why did you say we don't need any help? Because we might not be staying, that's why, Eric. I don't think this place is right. It's too big, it's out of the way. I'm thinking maybe an apartment, condo. Lyle, this is a great house. Oh, he's sulky. But I like it here, Lyle. No. Place with a health club, tennis, pool. Nothing's decided, but uh, I'm looking into it. Enjoy your tennis. And work on that forehand. Did you get all that? Is he for real or what? What are you talking about? He hasn't decided he's going to look into it. He's your brother, Eric, not your father. Look, you don't know what you're talking about, so just shut up. He's just taking over I your said life. shut up! All right, he's my brother. And I don't need you or anybody else questioning it. Is that clear? I was thinking of selling the computer, and I think I heard that even if I erased the file, someone could get them back. That's right. See the way a file allocation table works? All right, look, is there a way you can erase them so no one can get them back, no one can know they're over there? All you've got to do is tell me what you unerased. Yeah. Although police continue to trace the possibility that the brutal murders of record executive Jose Menendez and his wife Kitty in their Beverly Hills home was the work of organized crime, sources in the department admit they're coming up empty. According to these sources, the brutality of the killing seems inconsistent with a gangland pit. You want to get the hell off my property? Keep rolling. We're just filing a story. Uh, you're Eric Menendez, aren't you? Look, move the truck. If you could answer a couple no, of questions. No, no questions. Turn your cameras off. Just a couple of questions, Mr. Menendez. You people are really sick, you know that? They're really ghoulish. Don't you think I've suffered enough? This ought to do it. In just a second, the program searches through erased files, active files, every inch of the disk. Wipes everything. When you're done, can you fix it so no one knows you're here? Lyle! Up here. Uh, there's some reporter out front. They got... I know, I saw them. But you just let him stand He's there? He's just doing his job. What are you doing here? Nothing. What are you doing here? Just finishing up a few things. It's done. Clean as a whistle. I appreciate it. You'll take a check? Sure. I know this seems a bit odd, but... Not at all. If there's anything else I can do... There won't be. Wow, what's going on? Just making sure Dad hadn't started writing up any other wills. Oh, did he? We'll never know now, will we? Get it, let the machine get it. Well, I'm just going to see who it is. Suit yourself. You've got your own car. This is 555 No one is available to take your car. Now please leave a message at the tone. Lyle or Eric, I was hoping to catch you in. This is Dr. Ozeal. I got your message. I want to offer my condolences. And if there's any way I can help, I, I know I will, how hard all of this must be on you much it could help you if you had someone to talk to. You've got my number. I just uh, wanted you to know I'm available. It's an awesome view, huh? Awesome. <laughs> Took the word right out of my mouth. And of course, there is the health club, two pools, squash and tennis courts. Is there anything else I can show you? You know what's the matter with you? You're drifting. You gotta pull yourself together. While I'm fine. You sure? Okay, I'll tell her we'll take the place. You know. Dr. Ozeal called the house. Maybe you and me, we should, we should go see him. Why would we do that? Just, just to get some things straightened out. I mean, he says after something like this. We don't need that. We're not weak. Oh, I am. 
I can't get it out of my head. And you think it helps to wallow? You need something to focus on. That... Maybe you ought to get serious with your tennis. I'll see what I can set up. Concentrate! Lyle? I told Danny and Bob we were gonna meet him at the theater. Where are you going? Princeton. I thought we weren't going to school. I already notified UCLA I wasn't enrolling. I didn't say I was going to school. Princeton's a town, not just a university. There's more there. Like what? Opportunity. The point is, I wasn't joking. You just didn't take me seriously. <laughs> it's just kind of hard to imagine you running a restaurant, Lyle. <laughs> You've never even boiled yourself an egg. Frank Lloyd Wright wasn't a bricklayer. What's your point? None. I don't have a point. I never do, do I? I'm sure you'll be a magnificent restaurateur. Really? I can hardly wait. You don't have to. Watch. Not just the brutality of it, of course. My dad was such a, an irreplaceable man. He, he had a kind of drive that was unique. He was a great man. He's my role model. He'll always be my role model. A lot of our readers knew your father from when you lived here. They're concerned. They'll want to know how you're handling this tragedy. There were initial hysterics. I mean, who would want to do this to our parents, you know? Then after that night was over, I sort of entered into my dad's sort of mode. Kind of a ESP sort of thing, you know? I just took over his position in the family. Come on, Eric, we gotta do something. <laughs> Why? I don't know, I mean, geez. Craig, my whole life I've been doing something. So maybe I don't want to do anything right now. All right, all right. Just take it easy. <laughs> you know, you're right. You're right. We gotta do something, right? Well, what would Dad say? Tennis. He'd probably suggest we go play some tennis. Come on, Eric. I didn't... What? You didn't mean tennis? Fine. Fine. What do you say we write a script, Craig? Well, I got a million ideas. Just take them down, Craig. Let's go get something no, to eat. You want to do something, we're gonna write. What do you want to do? You want to do another murder? All right, now, cut it out. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's a bunch of crap, right? It's a bunch of fiction? For God's sake. I mean, what do we need fiction for when we have real murders? You know that, don't you? It's real murders. Real murders, Craig. Okay, take it easy. You want to know what happened?
Mom and Dad were in the TV room. Lyle was standing there with his gun. And he said, let's do it. He said, let's do it. We're looking for a younger clientele. That's what these lights are for. That's what the new banquettes are for. That means a lighter menu. Quick, quick. It's not eat till you're stuffed. It's light, quick, and healthy. So hard for people here in the East to understand. Get fried, get cream sauces. Nouvelle cuisine, that kind of Ah, that's the idea. But you don't have to think French. I want originality. This isn't a French restaurant. It's not an Italian restaurant. Write me up a list of dishes and let me see it. I know you can do it, talented man. All right. You advertise for waitresses? I did. Coming. Well, good morning. Just getting up? I was supposed to meet you at the restaurant. I know, but I finished practice early, so. Oh, wow. We're having quite a party, aren't we, huh? Stop it. I hired them as waitresses. What, and they just couldn't wait? Clever. Very clever. They didn't have anywhere to stay. I slept on the couch. Do you expect me to believe that? That's up to you. Now, I'm going to get dressed, and we can talk on the way to the airport. The airport? I'm going back to California. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> I'm telling you now. That should be adequate. I wish I had more to tell you. But so far, we haven't been able to turn up anything. I guess that just happens sometimes, huh? It does. I was uh, hoping that maybe, uh, now that you have more chance to think about it, maybe you can remember something. No, I uh, really don't see how we can help you more than we have. Any new information would help. I mean, anything you guys can think of. I've been busy. Uh, I just got back from Princeton. I started a business. If we had thought of anything before, we would have told you, wouldn't we? You don't seem very interested. I appreciate your concern, but I have a lot to do, sir. More important than catching the man who killed your parents? <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. It would be great if whoever did this went to jail. But it doesn't really help us in any way, does it? Thank you. You've never driven a Porsche before, have you? I have an Alpha, but you know, that's just a piece of junk. Mm, nothing handles like a Porsche. There's nothing really comparable. No, there isn't. You just do the paperwork, I'll write you a check. She said, of course. No, 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 no. If that's the way you feel, then the sooner that we get together, the better. I'm not, I'm not at the office. I had the calls forwarded. I can be there 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Eric, Eric, that's what I'm here for. You, you need to talk. I'm here. Don't worry about that. I'll meet you at the office as soon as you can make it. Eric is going to meet me at the office. What for? What for? What for? To tell me that he killed his parents, I assume. Eric? Oh, thank God you're here. He's not here yet? Look, do me a favor. Don't leave. Wait here like you're waiting for one of the other doctors. If there's any trouble... Trouble? He killed two people, Judalon, so if, if you hear anything that sounds dangerous, 
You call the police. I better get back to my office. My life could depend on it, so I don't want you drifting off or fall. It's the elevator. Oh, I thought I heard the door. Come on in, Eric. She, she's waiting for, for another doctor there. I know how upset you are, but we'll, we'll have all the time we need to talk about this. Did you, uh, did you talk this over with your brother? Or uh, did you decide to come here? No, now? I, um, I mentioned to him that I, that I was thinking about seeing you. He didn't think it was a good idea. I can't sleep. Are you having nightmares? I keep... I keep waking up. And my dad's... He's standing over me. He's all, he's all bloody. He's just, he's, he's just standing there staring at me. And I, I, I can, I can make him, I can make him go away. But if I try and go back to sleep, he, he's, he comes back and, So sick of crying and can we can we go outside or somewhere else besides here? You know we killed him, don't you? Yes. It's a perfect crime. God, it was awful. Just his bodies, his blood, and skin. I just kept shooting. He was a very controlling man. I want to write a book about my father. Somebody should write a book about him. He was a great man. Miles going to kill me. He doesn't want me to talk about it. You'll have to tell him that you did. No. no. You, you'll have to. He'll know that you talked to me. You can't hide anything.
You know, brother of mine. Lyle, I know. You betrayed me! What the hell do you call I it? I didn't betray you, I just... You killed us. Don't you know that? You weak, whining, pathetic excuse! Now what are we gonna do? We have to kill him. You know that? Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I can't. I can't tell anyone what he said unless you threaten me. It's privileged, but not if you threaten me. That's not privileged. You're not going to tell anyone, right? I wouldn't do that. Why would I do that? I want to help you. I'm trying to help you. The hell with all of you. I mean, remember we had trouble with the Berkeleys? He helped us out. So you just went and told them everything? I, I had to talk to somebody. I mean, I was going crazy. It's, it's gonna be fine. It is. I'll just go see him a couple times and, and I'll be fine. And we're at, at a restaurant. We got a chance to talk. You gonna go back soon? No. I'm gonna stay and keep an eye on you. Mr. Signorelli. How are you? Really glad you can come. I really appreciate this. Come on, let's find some pistol talk. Well, you're his friend, aren't you? What can you tell me about him? What's he like? He's a nice guy. He's a terrific athlete. He's smart. I like him a lot. I don't know what to tell you. How did he get along with his parents? Did they fight a lot? I guess, I'm sure. I don't know. Did you ever hear him say anything about wishing that his parents were dead or anything like that? Look, I'm not sure what I should say. I mean, I didn't talk to my dad or a lawyer or anything. What, are you under any apprehension that you're a suspect in this case, Mr. No, Sigmund? no, of course well, why not. Why would you need a lawyer for I didn't say I needed a lawyer. I just... I don't know, okay? He's a friend of mine, that's all. I just... I don't want to say anything to get a friend in trouble. What kind of trouble? Look, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. We're friends, that's all. Friends, that's all. And friends do things together, huh? Well, what kind of things did you do together? I don't know. Tennis, swimming, we wrote scripts. You wrote scripts? Oh, one script, really, that's all. What was it about? Just a movie script. What was it about, Mr. Signorelli? It was... It was about a kid who kills his parents. Okay? The patient exhibits no apprehension concerning the purchase of the shotguns, which he feels are untraceable because he used a false ID. Nevertheless, he seems in general, to be in a deeply conflicted emotional state and has considerable difficulty expressing that conflict. To... Aren't you going home tonight? I haven't made up my mind. Well, I'd really rather you didn't stay the night. I wish you would be more positive about our relationship, Jidalan. And these are not easy times. But they're not easy at all. I'm in danger. You're in danger. How can I be in danger? They don't even know who I am. Unless, unless maybe they followed you here or something. The patient's manner seems to be sullen and morose, which I attribute to the tension that he's been under. And from time to time, he expresses sentiments of Remorse. I appreciate your 
coming, Lyle, and I know how you feel about your brother talking to me. I, I just want to assure you that you couldn't be more wrong. That's not why you said you wanted to talk to me. No, it's not. Look, I'm aware that you think I represent a danger to you, but the fact of the matter is you're a danger to me, and that danger has to be eliminated because I will not choose to live my life in fear. Neither did my father. But it, it seems to me that there is a way to eliminate that fear. I doubt it. I'm just going to turn that on. And I'd like you both to tell me in your own words exactly what happened the night your parents were killed. You're crazy, you know that? Come on, Eric, let's go. Look, what happens if the police break this case? Now, don't, don't be in such a hurry. I can help you if you tell me what happened. Is there anyone else in a position to help you? Like I can? What are you talking about? Well, look, let's, let's examine the dynamics of this situation. What are we all afraid of? You're afraid that I might tell the police what I know, and I'm afraid that you might kill me to keep that from happening. And that's not exactly a baseless fear. Get to the point. Well, the point is, what's going to happen if you get caught? Go to prison. You're kidding yourself. You'll go to the gas chamber. But I think I can stop that from happening. How? Because I'm your therapist. And because my testimony could help you avoid a conviction on psychological grounds. And at the very least, it'll keep you out of the gas chamber. And the catch is, uh, this little recording you want us to make. Well, so I feel safe, knowing that you know that if anything happens to me, this will become public, and we have to look after ourselves, Lyle. This tape protects me. It could protect you. And that sounds like a good proposition for all three of us. In the event that you ever come to trial, anything that you say or tell this machine could be helpful. Help mitigate. Mr. Signorelli, may I help you? I talked to my father and his lawyer. They said I should talk to you. He said Lyle was worried that there might have been another will. You know, his father might have changed the will or making changes. He checked his father's computer, but he couldn't find anything. Right? But he wasn't sure, so he hired a guy to come out to the house and erase everything. Do you know who this guy was, uh, the guy he hired? No. What else did he say? He told me they shot them. He said Lyle handed him the gun and they went in and they ran into the room and Lyle started shooting. He was shooting his father and he looked at Eric and said, shoot mom. And he did. Look, I am tired. I just want to go to bed. No, I don't want to take anything. I am just going to go to sleep, okay? No, it's not going to work. I don't want to see you. Why can't you just accept that? It's all working? Top of the line. All right. Now, you know what you're going to do, right? Yeah. You've been playing me, what, two years now? What do you think? Is my game getting any better? Yeah. I used to beat you once in a while. Exactly. Now we're just gonna find the right tournament. I'm ready. Listen, Eric, I gotta tell you, the police called me in and they're asking a lot of questions. You didn't, you didn't say anything to them, did you? Yeah, sure, right. I told them you killed your parents. Well, you better not. Did you? No. Damn. 
Open the door, Gerard. I've got to talk to you. Open the door. I know what you're thinking. You want to go to the police. But you can't do that, Judelon. You've got to listen to me. You can't do that. Judelon, you'll be killed. And not by me. You'll be killed. Got some good news for you. You ready? Yeah. Found a great tournament for you. Get your game back on track. It's in Israel. Wow, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I thought I was ready. It's the baby. best thing for you. You have a chance to get away for a little while. I'm giving this a lot of thought, Eric. All right, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe it's what I should do. Good. I'll leave the day after tomorrow. Can I please have the number for the Beverly Hills Police Department? Get me the Beverly Hills Police. As I'd like to speak to somebody about the Menendez murders, please. Detective Aguayo. Eric and Lyle Menendez killed their parents. They confessed to the therapist, and he's got it all on tape. Can someone please come and get me? Jerome O'Shea? That's right. I'm Detective Arguello. This is a warrant for all papers and records including but not limited to audio tapes of your treatment of Joseph Lyle Menendez and Eric Galen Menendez. Well, it is true. I do feel kind of funny putting it on the market. It doesn't make much sense holding on to it, does it? I just don't like it anymore. They did do a good job of cleaning up, though, didn't they? Anyway, I gotta go. All right, talk to you later. for the murder of Kitty and Jose Menendez. You have a right to remain silent. If you waive this right, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You know where your brother is, Law? Israel, playing the tournament. All right, take everything out of your pockets and put it on the countertop, please. Something I need. Well, what is it? It's paste. I wear a hairpiece. <laughs> hey guys, this guy's wearing a rug, man. <laughs> <laughs> Detective Aguayo, you please under arrest for the murder of your parents. You have a right to remain silent. You waive this right. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Eric. 
Well, we can't talk now. They're probably listening. Everything's going to be okay. You believe what they're asking for? Lau wears a rug. <laughs> you kidding? He's bald? I don't know. Sending him bald. The jail's got a regulation. No hair pieces. His lawyer's asking for permission for him to wear the rug in court, any public appearances. And what's the regulation on that? No one seems to know. I'd say give it to him. Well, it makes me think it's not all going to be this easy. You've both been charged with two counts of murder. Both charges carry the special circumstances for which you could be sentenced to death. Eric, Gail, and Menendez. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Joseph Lyle Menendez. To the charges in the amended indictment, how do you plead? Not guilty. Given the choice, would you rather be good or lucky? I'd rather be done. Remember the woman said, Ozeal said, the they said. The woman said, Ozeal said, they said. Judalon Smith. She said that Dr. Ozeal said that Lyle and Eric bought the guns in San Diego under an assumed name. Well, sure, but what name? She didn't know that. I do. Ray Arguello does. He went down to San Diego, gun shop to gun shop. And the second one he goes into, he finds a sales slip for two Mossbergs. What are Mossbergs? Shotguns. Two of them, the Friday before the killings, in the name of Nicholas Mariner, who happens to have been Lyle's best friend from Princeton, who happens to have been working in a restaurant in New York City that whole weekend, who happens to tell Arguello when he calls that he lost his wallet the last time he saw Lyle. Lester, that's incredible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's never had a client go to the gas chamber yet. Did she ever have clients who blew their parents' heads off with shotguns? You don't know Leslie Abramson. Just watch. There she is. Miss Abramson! Miss Abramson! Are you going to be able to keep it? Abramson, attorney for Eric Menendez, refusing to comment on the appeals process that's been dragging on for almost a year and a half. At stake, whether a jury will ever hear the confessions Lyle and Eric Menendez allegedly made to Beverly Hills psychologist Jerome Ozeal. We've got Signorelli. Eric confessed to him we shot mom and dad, and he doesn't say anything? And, and maybe they play chess later that evening? It's a hell of a witness. I don't know what we've got. They're going to make that kid look awful on the cross. What about the shrink? Oh, he won't even talk to us until there's a ruling on the privilege, which will be at least six months. And then an appeal if it goes against him. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not coming together. Yeah, what is it? Excuse me. They told me I'd find Detective Arguello here. Yeah, that's me. My name's Gerald Bronstein. Lyle Menendez hired me to erase some files from his father's computer. It's been two years now since Lyle and Eric Menendez were arrested for the shotgun murders of their parents it's in the TV room of their It's been two and a half years since Lyle and Eric Menendez were arrested for the shotgun murders of their parents. Lyle and Eric Menendez were arrested for the shotgun murders of their parents in the TV room of their Beverly Hills home three and a half years since the killings. Defense and prosecution alike await a Supreme Court ruling, expected any day now, on whether or not a supposed confession they made to psychologist L. Jerome Ozeal can be introduced at the trial. Are you surprised the court voiding the doctor-patient privilege? Apparently threats were made. When a patient threatens a doctor, there's no privilege. Did they confess to Ozeal? We haven't studied the doctor's notes. We just got the ruling. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've been waiting three years to read these notes. Wait, now, let, let me ask you now. The court won't let you use the tapes of their session with the doctor. Is that a victory for the defense? I wish we had the tapes so the jury could hear what they said in their own voices. But we will have Dr. Ozeal's testimony. And we believe that the doctor will be a very substantial witness. When do you plan on using Ozeal? I can tell you quite clearly that I intend to attack the credibility of Dr. Ozeal in every Every area known to man and God. How do you plan to attack his credibility, please? This is fantastic. They told him it was a perfect murder. They wanted to commit the perfect crime. They only killed the mother because they couldn't find a way to kill him without killing her. This is incredible stuff. And we've got his notes. He'll testify to what they said. It's just as good. How the hell are they going to defend this? On August 20th, 1989, Lyle and Eric Menendez killed their parents. They didn't do it for money? 
They didn't do it to commit the perfect crime. They didn't do it out of hatred. It was done out of fear. What do you mean fear? They, they were abused psychologically, physically, sexually. These boys perceived that their parents were about to kill them. They reacted with pure panic, pure terror. They killed in self-defense. This is it. This is the big day. This is when it all happens. By 6 o'clock this morning, there was already a line out in front of the courthouse in Van Nuys where the trial of Lyle and Eric Menendez begins today. Two juries have been selected, one to hear the evidence against each brother. Now, in regards to Mr. Menendez, how many individual wounds did you document in your autopsy report? Six. Now, this first wound that you documented, a wound to the back of the head, could you tell us about that? That is a contact wound. Uh, the muzzle of the weapon was placed directly in contact with the body, uh, in this case the scalp, so that the entire load of the shotgun shell, the pellets, wadding, entered the head. Mm -hmm. uh, I also recovered pellets along with the wadding. Referring now to the autopsy you performed on Mary Louise Menendez, your report indicates that you identified 10 separate areas of wounding. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, referring to Mrs. Menendez, beginning with wound number one. This is a shotgun wound to the head, uh, particularly the left cheek. This is also a contact wound. The gun, the barrel of the gun, was placed directly to the cheek of the deceased. And on the afternoon of August 18, 1989, do you recall making a sale of two Mossberg 12-gauge shotguns? Yes. And did you require identification of the purchaser? Yes, he presented a driver's license. So, the name on the license was Nick, Nick Mariner. Mariner. Mr. Mariner, did there come a time when you visited Lyle Menendez in his home? Yes. And could you tell us how that visit ended? I was asked to leave. By Lyle Menendez? Yeah, by Lyle, yeah. And after you left, did you notice that you had left something behind? Yeah, I uh, left my wallet. Did you actually sell Rolex watches that day to these defendants? Yes, I did. I sold them three. The total of the sale came to $15,039.40. And the person who bought this car, do you see him in the courtroom today? At the defense table, in the blue sweater. Indicating the defendant, Lyle Menendez. What specifically did Lyle Menendez say regarding wanting to see this penthouse? They just wanted to see the largest unit that was available. What was the sale price of that? Of course there is the 990,000. Two pools, squash. He said that um, they ran to the door, the TV room, and Lyle went up and put his shoulder up against the door on the right. Eric said he looked in, saw his parents sitting on the couch, and Lyle swung open the door and shot his father and looked at Eric and said, shoot mom. Isn't it a fact, Mr. Signorelli, that when you first told this story to Detective Arguello, you told him that Eric did not shoot his mother when he walked into the room, that although his brother said, shoot mom, he couldn't do it? That's correct. And is that still what you're telling us was Eric's statement, or has that changed? I believe that that still is a statement. Thank you. There's a kind of opening night excitement here today as the state attempts to put the finishing touches on its case. If the lines for seats in the crowded courtroom were a bit longer than usual this morning, it's because the two juries will finally hear from Dr. L. Jerome Ozeal, the Beverly Hills psychologist to whom the Menendez brothers allegedly confessed. The defense spent three years in court fighting to keep Dr. Ozeal's testimony from being heard. Today, the jury will hear it. I recall Eric talking at a length about how, once the plan was formed, that it was impossible to alter the plan and still have it uh, be perfect as a murder, uh, to come off perfectly. And even though they had uh, doubts as to whether it, in fact, 
was appropriate, um, uh, whether it was reasonable, uh, fair, uh, whatever, uh, to have the mother included in the murder plan. But um, uh, still, they couldn't determine any other way to kill the father. Did Eric Menendez specifically tell you that one of the reasons why he had to kill the mother is that she would be a potential witness? Oh, objection to the leading, Your Honor. Overruled. You may answer. That's correct. Did Eric Menendez describe to you, in particular, what it was that he was upset with his father about? Well, basically that the father had just been uh, completely dominating, uh, controlling, uh, impossible to please. They saw the father as someone who was pretty much impossible to live with. Your Honor, I'd move to strike. It's not the defendant's words. Overruled. The answer will stand. Dr. Oziel, did there come a time when Lyle Menendez arrived at your office? Uh, he did. And could you please describe his demeanor when he came into your office? He was extremely upset, threatened, threatening, menacing. Menacing? So I felt there was a strong threat to my life. And did you tell either Lyle or Eric Menendez that you had this fear? Uh, yes, I did. And what was the response? Uh, from Lyle, uh, he laughed. And did either Lyle or Eric ever tell you he had been sexually abused? No. And did either of them ever tell you that he acted in self-defense? No. We'll take a short recess at this time. Both juries are excused. They should return to the courtroom in 20 minutes. Counsel, please remain. I have just a few remarks before we continue. The remark has to do with the conduct of counsel during the questioning of the witness. Specifically, that of Miss Abramson and mugging to the audience during the testimony of the witness. If the prosecution would do the same during the testimony of one of your witnesses, how would you react to that? As long as it wasn't in front of the jury, it wouldn't matter to me. But counsel, the jury is right behind you and to your left. The jury can't see what I'm doing. I could see your eyes rolling when you're facing the witness. The jury can't see that either. There is a jury in the jury box that could easily see what you're doing. Now, is there some... I will try. No, not try. You will succeed in not mugging for the jury, not making faces to the audience. You will behave professionally. Is that clear? Yes, of course. Did you ask your lover, Miss Judelon Smith, to come to your office on October 31st in order to eavesdrop on your therapy session with Eric and Lyle Menendez that day? Actually, it was quite the contrary. Well, can you answer that question, yes or no, Dr. Ozeal? I don't think I can. You can't answer that? Did you ask her to be there? No, I didn't. Oh, there you go. Now, you knew Miss Smith quite intimately. How would you describe her mental condition? Would you describe her as a stable person? No, I wouldn't. And she sued you, didn't she? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Now, in fact, you told your unstable girlfriend details from your therapy session with Eric and Lyle Menendez. Isn't that right? Would you like to ask me why? No, I would like to ask you what I would like to ask you, and that is what I just asked you. Can you answer it? Yes, I told her. And isn't it true that one of the reasons for your testifying the way you did about threats from the defendants was to justify the fact that you told your unstable girlfriend patient secrets and your license as a therapist was already on probation and you were concerned about that? Miss Abramson, I'm sure... Is that what happened? You can answer the question, sir. No, that isn't what happened. The defense may have scored a few points today, raising questions about the credibility of the state's key witness, but they still face an uphill fight, a fight literally for the lives of Lyle and Eric Menendez, who face the gas chamber for the shotgun slayings of their parents, a fight that won't be resolved until the defendants take the stand themselves and tell their side of the story. Spelling your last name? Joseph Lyle Menendez, M-E-N-E-N-D-E-Z. Mr. Menendez, are you related to Eric Galen Menendez, who's seated here? He's my brother. And were your parents Mary Louise Menendez and Jose Menendez? Yes. Did you love your mom and dad? Yes. And on August 20th, 1989, did you and your brother 
Kill your mother and father? Yes. Did you kill them for money? What's your answer? No. Did you kill them because you wanted to pay them back for the way they had treated you? No. Why did you kill your parents? Because we were afraid. After sports practices, he would massage me. He would show me. He would fondle me and ask me to do the same to him. And for how long did this happen? Not too long. Began to change and became more involved. What do you mean, more involved? Put me in the bathroom. It would, uh, put me on my knees. It would guide me on my movements. I would have oral sex with him. At some point, did he do some other things to you? He would use objects, toothbrush, some sort of shaving utensil, a brush. And was there some point when he decided to use something besides the toothbrush? Yes. And what was it? <laughs> He raped me. Did you cry? Yes. Did you bleed? Yes. Were you scared? Very. Eric was crying, he was basically shaking, and I asked him what was the matter. He was just crying, and I told him, you know, you can tell me what is it. He told me things about his dad that were going on, things like, like that happened to me, only they were still going on. I felt maybe he was going to try and kill himself, and I told my dad that I knew everything that was going on between him and Eric and that it had to stop. And what did he say? He said, what I do with my son is none of your business. And he said, I warn you, don't throw your life away. And he said, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going back to Princeton, and your brother's going to UCLA like we planned, and we're going to forget this conversation ever took place. And when he finished talking, what happened? I interrupted him. He didn't get to finish talking. I swore, I told him that he was sick, and that no, he wasn't going to touch my brother again. And that I would tell everybody, I would tell everybody everything about him. I would tell the police, that I would tell the family. I was just out of control. And he, and he leaned back and he, he said, we all make choices in life, son. Eric made his and you've made yours. And he just looked at me and he got up to leave. What did you think? I thought, oh my God, I just made it a hundred times worse. What did you think was going to happen? I thought we were in danger. I, I thought he had, he felt he had no choice. But to what? That he would kill us. And I spoke to my brother and he said, oh God, they're going to kill us. So we agreed we had to protect ourselves. We had to go get some guns. Did you go to get guns? We went to the store in Santa Monica, this big five, the sporting goods store. We went there to buy handguns that we carry around, but we weren't able to do that because there was a waiting period for handguns. You had to wait two weeks. And could you tell us what happened then? Well, we drove around, talked about it. We drove down to San Diego. We bought shotguns there because there wasn't a waiting period for shotguns. And that was a Friday. And we tried to stay away from them all weekend. And Sunday night, we thought maybe we'd go out, you know, because We'd be safe if we were out of the house. And we went to tell my parents that we're going to a movie. And my mom said no, that we couldn't go out. What did you do? 
Well, my dad sort of pushed her aside. He spoke to my brother and told him to go upstairs to his room and wait for him. And I said, no, you're not going to touch my brother. And he's just ignoring me, telling him to go upstairs and wait for him. And my mom said something to me about it. I had ruined the family. And they went into the den and they closed the doors. What did you think was going to happen? I thought they were going ahead with their plan to kill us. Then? Yes. So I ran upstairs and I said to Eric, it's happening, they're going to kill us. And what did you do? I got my gun. And what did your brother do? He got his and we ran. Where did you go? We ran to where he had the ammunition, which was in my brother's car. Did you load your gun? I did. And we ran into the room, into the den, and we started firing. I don't know who was firing at who or what was going on. I was just, you know, firing my gun. And do you remember firing the very close shot at your father? Yes. And at some point, was your gun empty? Yes. And I could see somebody moving, so I reloaded. You reloaded? Is that yes? Yes. And what did you do after you reloaded? I ran around and shot my mom. And was that the last shot that was fired? Is that yes? Yes. Yes. There's no question in anyone's mind that Lyle Menendez, after four days of riveting testimony, has completely changed the tone of this trial. How he'll withstand cross-examination, that's what we'll find out today. Mr. Menendez, you heard the tape played in this courtroom of your call to the police to 911? Yes, I did. And on that tape, you told the police you had just come home and found your parents, is that correct? I think I said someone killed my parents. You were lying to them, weren't you? Yes. And they asked you a number of questions, and you were lying to them in your answers, weren't you? Yes. And you were crying, weren't you? You can hear yourself crying on the tape. Yes. You were lying while you were crying, is that correct? Yes. Did you love your parents, Mr. Menendez? Did you love your mother? Yes. When you placed the shotgun against her left cheek and you pulled the trigger, was that an act of love, Mr. Menendez? It's confusion, fear. You were afraid of her at that point? Yeah. Where was your mother at this point? She was, my memory's not that good on this. I think I remember she was like around the side of the coffee table. And what was she doing? In my mind, she was, Sneaking around the coffee table. You just said your mother was sneaking. Is that correct? You just used that term sneaking? Yes. And did you think she was going to do something sneaky to you when she was crawling behind that coffee table? No. Your mother wasn't sneaking, was she? She was trying to get away from being shot to death. I don't know. I really don't. Well, tell me, Mr. Menendez, what threat did your mother pose to you when you ran out of the room to reload? Nothing that I can remember in my mind specifically. And how many rounds did you put into your shotgun? Just one. So what were you afraid of, Mr. Menendez? Were you afraid that your mother might live? I don't know. I just think he's cute, and, well, I kind of feel sorry for him. Thank you. Let's move over here. What about you? What brings you to the courthouse so early in the morning? Well, Eric's going to testify, and I just wanted to be here to show my support. I mean, like, I haven't heard him, but I've been watching him on TV, and I don't know. She thinks he's sexy. <laughs> With the court's permission, Eric Menendez will be sedated when he takes the stand in his own defense. His emotional state is apparently quite tenuous, and the defense is afraid he won't be able to take the strain of testifying. Eric Galen Menendez. And your father would massage you? Yes. Like he massaged you when you were swimming? Similar. He would have me strip off my clothes until I was just wearing my underwear. And when you were six years old, did the massages change in character in any way? Yes. And what was the change? He had me take off my underwear. And he would turn me over on my back. And he would massage my genitals. 
Was he using his hands? Yes. At some point after that, did he start doing something else? He would massage me with his mouth. He, he came into my room and he told me to kneel down on my bed. And, and I did. And then he came over to my bed and he, and he threw me off the bed and told me to kneel on the floor. And I was real confused because he had just told me to get on my knees on the bed. So did you kneel on the floor as he ordered you to do? Yes. Okay. What happened next? He was unbuckling his pants and in some way, either by his hand on my head or by telling me, he told me what he wanted me to do. And was he... What was his demeanor? What was he like at this time? He was rough and he was angry. And at one point I started screaming and I started saying, stop, it hurts, it hurts. And did he stop? No. How did you react to this pain? I just sort of died off. I just sort of left myself. I just pretended that it wasn't happening. And how old were you when this happened? I was 13. Now, you got your guns, you and your brother. You loaded your guns. Why didn't you just wait for your father and mother to come out of the room? Because I was thinking they were coming out. I only thought I had seconds. I, I thought that they were, um, that as soon as they came out of the room, I was going to die. So I had to get to that room before they came out. And what would have happened if they came out? Objection, speculation. Overruled, you may answer. I thought that they were going to take my gun. It was this, it was this stupidly big thing, and it was just, um, I, I, I thought that they were going to grab it. I remember thinking, they're going to get it, they're going to get this. Now, after you went into the den. What do you remember happening? I just remember firing. Did you aim in any particular place? Just, just right in front of me. And what was in front of you? I was right in front of a coffee table. But what was in front of you? A coffee table. You came into the room. You moved to the coffee table. Am I not understanding what you're saying? I was just firing as I came in the room. I just started firing. In what direction? In front of me. And what was in front of you? My parents. I want to take you back to the Friday before your parents were killed, Mr. Menendez. Now, you testified that you and your brother decided to get guns. Did you discuss what kind of guns? Not really, just any handguns. At some point, did you decide where you were going to make this purchase? Yes, and that's when we drove to the sporting goods store. The big five store in Santa Monica? Yes. And you took a look at handguns? Yes. When you were looking at these guns, was your brother right there with you? Yes, sir. You weren't trying to hide anything? No. So he was right there with you at the counter looking at these handguns? Yes. Were they in a glass case or were they up on a wall? Um, they were in a, a glass case. It was, um, it was a two-shelf uh, container, I believe so, and there were the guns on top. But at some point, you picked out a handgun that you thought was appropriate, right? Yes. And that's when he told us that we had to, uh, I mean, that, the, that there was some sort of waiting period. Now, you're telling the truth about everything in this case, aren't you? I'm telling the truth the best I can. And you wanted handguns so you could protect yourself. And you went to the Big Five store in Santa Monica to buy these handguns. Definitely. Without a doubt, I did. Mr. Menendez, did you know that Big Five stopped carrying handguns in March of 1986? No, I don't know that. Uh, Mr. Kuriyama, there were guns there, and we did look at them.
Does this appear to be the area of the coffee table that's shown in that photograph on the board? Yes. Can you see what that is that was next to your mother? The letters? It's a um, registration and a parking registration from UCLA. And in fact, it says UCLA there, right on the card. Yes. Now, you testified that your mother was going to kill you that night, correct? Yes. And that's still your belief? That's still my belief to this day? Yes. Well, if I knew that they didn't have any weapons when I walked in the room, I would not have walked in the room. But I don't know what my belief is to this day. Now, if your mother had been planning to kill you, Mr. Menendez, why would she have been filling out your application for UCLA? It's clear at this point that the defense is based on the mental condition or state of mind of the defendants at the time of the shootings. The law is clear that when the defense posits mental condition or state of mind, the prior therapeutic history of the defendants is admissible. Accordingly, I am reversing the California Supreme Court ruling in this case and will allow the jury to hear the tape recording of the defendant's December 11th, 1989 session with Dr. L. Jerome Ozeal. I really think that there just, you know, there just wasn't really a family. And she was so drained from learning about my father's affair because I, I was... I was listening in the next room, and for months and months, I would have to listen to my mother crying in the house. And I still think my mom's death was a suicide. Sort of a, she had given us permission to, to please carry out her suicide. My father should be killed, there's no question. What he's doing is he's impossible to live with. It's almost that he, he raised us to, to be able to handle doing this thing, and that we could deal with it. Because he trained us like basic training. There was no way I was going to make a decision to kill my mother without Eric's consent. I just let him sleep on it for a couple of days. My mother and my father were, were two people that I loved. It doesn't matter what they were or what they actually were. And I, I understand why it was done because... That's it, you see. I, I think one of the big... Biggest pains he has is that you miss having these people around. But I had a dog once and I miss not having my dog around. Oh. If I can make such a gross analogy. At the time the people of the state of California rested their case in chief, this was a murder trial. As soon as the defense began, it became anything but a murder trial. But I am here to tell you today that now you have to concentrate on the murders of Jose and Mary Louise Menendez. Lyle Menendez gets on the stand and he gives a stellar performance. He cries at the appropriate times. It's a great show. But keep in mind, it is the best defense daddy's money could buy. The defendants weren't the only ones who told you what Jose Menendez was like. We had his sisters, his brother-in-law, his friends, people who knew him. We had teachers and coaches. And I've made a list of words they used to describe him. He was belligerent, manipulative, powerful, rude, nasty, never satisfied, had a cut you to shreds tone of voice, was aggressive, frightening, intimidating, cruel, harshest person ever met. He had to win. He was overbearing, confrontational, demeaning, abusive, sadistic, sarcastic, controlling, fake, secretive, demanding, cold, competitive, arrogant, angry, and belittling. How many people do you know would fit that description? And would you let them raise your child? After a lifetime of terror, these children were frightened. After a lifetime of threats, these children felt threatened. It may be hard for you to believe that these parents would have killed their children. But is it so hard to understand 
how these children believed that their parents would kill them. It is hard sometimes to look at pain and we look away. We close our eyes in movies. We don't read the newspaper. We don't watch the news. I ask you now not to turn away from the pain and to see it for what it was and what it did to Lyle Menendez. I ask you to return a verdict of guilty of involuntary manslaughter. For all the children who have been beaten within an inch of their lives, for all the children who have been scalded with hot water as punishment, who have been burned with cigarettes, who have been locked in rooms for days at a time, years at a time, and not fed, this defense is an offense. And for those children who got out of the house and made lives for themselves and became productive members of society, this defense is an offense. The defendant and his brother viciously and mercilessly attacked their parents on the night of August 20th, 1989. The defense has been no less vicious and merciless to them in this trial. They have made obscene accusations, misleading claims, and outright lies about their parents who cannot be here to defend themselves. It's very easy to go to a crime scene of a homicide and take a lot of gruesome pictures and parade them in front of a jury. But where is the picture of Jose Menendez bending Eric over the footboard of his bed when the child is 12 years old so the father can now go all the way in spite of the child's screams? Well, there is such a picture. But unfortunately, it only exists in Eric's mind now. I'd ask you to indulge me and to indulge Eric as you're deliberating in this case and to just try to conceive because I can tell that some of you are very resistant to what I'm saying. I'm not blind and I'm not stupid, but you owe us as jurors one thing only, that you must entertain the possibility that we are telling the truth. And you must also try, however foreign to you it may be, to put yourself in Eric Menendez's shoes in order to understand if he did what he did for the reasons we say he did. And if we have raised through our evidence a reasonable doubt that malice was present or a reasonable doubt as to whether or not they were acting in the heat of passion or whether or not they were acting in fear, then they lose, we win, and it can be no more than manslaughter. Eric became my client three and a half years ago. There's no way you can go back and share the experiences of a 19-year-old, which is what he was at the time, without getting more than somewhat professionally involved. And I admit to that. I admit to an enormous bias in favor of this client. In those early days, I was the only person he had. And I've had him in my hands for all this time. And now, I have to give him up to you. There really is good and evil in this world. There really is. There are really good people and bad people. And sadly enough, given where we are, Eric Menendez is a good person who did a bad thing. And you cannot, cannot judge the sinner by the sin alone, because you will never know what to call the sin unless you look at the person who did it. All right, we've got four choices on each count. That is, each parent, the killing of each parent. We can find Mr. Eric Menendez guilty of first-degree murder, one or both counts, second-degree murder, one or two counts, voluntary manslaughter or involuntary manslaughter, one or both counts. Or not guilty. Yeah, well, you forget about that. He blew two people away. But, uh, look, uh, we can't find them not guilty. The judge made that very clear. I mean, they shot them, so they have to be guilty of something. So, let's start with first degree. How many think it was first degree? What the hell is this? First degree murder. Of course it was first degree murder. They shot them. After what those people did, I would have shot them myself. Manslaughter, how many votes? I would say we have a lot to talk about. What do we know? We know the parents didn't have weapons. They weren't trying to kill him. Lyle thought they were. That's what matters. He says. 
Is there any reason we have to believe him? He was on the stand almost two weeks. They cross-examined him like I never heard of anybody right. being cross-examined. If he was lying, it would have come out. Of course he's lying. You know that. Yeah, I know that. Beyond a reasonable doubt? No one could listen to all that testimony and not have doubts. I don't. Look at this. Look what he did to them. That's murder. That's first-degree murder. Take that down. We don't have to look at that. You're saying Lyle wasn't abused. How can you say that? He confessed to his therapist. How come he never mentioned it? Well, would you tell about something like that? Raped and sodomized and everything else? If I told someone I killed two people, I'd damn well tell them why. I'm sick and tired of hearing that Eric shot them. We know he shot them. Why? Oh, please. Why? That's the question. Who gives a damn why? Oh, listen to him. They all made up their minds before the trial was Oh, listen over. to you. Right. That little bastard got up there and cried, and you all cried right along with him. Oh, them. real man don't cry? That's sick. That is just sick. Who does it remind you of? Jose. You want premeditation? You heard it on that tape. And who made that tape? Ozeal. Do you trust that man? I don't trust him, but he can work a tape recorder. Listening. I'll tell you what I was listening to. Bam! Bam, 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 bam! How many shots they put in? I heard that. What? It just went over your head or something? It certainly went over yours. Why does it take so many shots to kill two people? Because he panicked, like he said. After what that man did to him? You don't know what he did. I know what my father did. I know how it... This ain't about your father. I know an abused child when I see one. Eric Menendez was abused. It has come to this court's attention that in spite of re-instruction to deliberate, this jury has come to a deadlock. I give up. Let's, I don't know, split the difference. Look, I mean, the father abused him. We give you that. Manslaughter for the father, murder one for killing the mother. No. No, we can't do this. That's not a verdict. It's a lie. None of us believe it. Do you think Lyle planned to kill his father? He planned it all the way. But you're going to vote manslaughter. And you. You don't think he planned it, but you're going to swear he did. You're going to swear he planned it. No, I'm Hannah. not. One way or another, it was our job to end this thing, and we didn't do it. God help us. Resolving this insoluble deadline. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for.